Okay, Alex Morgantho, good luck to you. Let's play E4 in this game. Speaking of, uh, like, trying to detect cheating, you know, again, this would never happen. But when I was playing a lot of tournament chess, especially in my younger years, when I was going around to big tournaments, and, like, occasionally people would cheat in tournaments, and the detection methods were, you know, a lot less sophisticated. Also, the engines that people were using, just even for just analysis, were you know, far weaker than modern engines, although still incredibly strong. Let's play queen d3. Um, I always felt like, okay, so if you're a tournament director and you suspected someone in your tournament is cheating, but you can't prove it, like they're vastly outperforming their rating, like maybe they're doing some suspicious stuff during the game, but you have no hard evidence. I think one of the best cheating detection methods would honestly just be to have like one or two strong players like ask the accused person to explain their reasoning behind their moves. You know, and I know this would never happen. People would say it would like violate that person's uh, tournament rights or whatever. But chess players who have reached a certain level and understand the game to a certain degree, they all tend to like think and can describe their thoughts in a similar matter in manner. And I think it would just be like the biggest giveaway of all if someone had to do that when clearly like they didn't know what they were doing and they were just reproducing engine moves. So it'd be kind of cool if that could be like included somehow. Um, and again, it's not at all practical, <laughs> certainly with online play. But it would be really interesting. I must admit, though, I also like, um, you know, videos involving, like, interrogations of uh, suspects and stuff and all of the analysis, like, that's done of how people who are guilty, like, act. So that, that just kind of, like, tickles my creative intellectual curiosity. They can say it was a hunch. Yeah, they could. But, uh, again, good players will almost always have reasoning behind their move, even if it turns out to be uh, poor reasoning. JCS criminal psychology. Yeah, exactly, Mark John. That's, that's a great channel if you're into that stuff. That's right, William. Yeah, you read my blogs. Shout out to William Bostock on YouTube. D5. Okay, aggressive move, but I think that's misplaced here because I can take it probably with the knight. I can also throw in a check here. That might be good too. Let's play the check. That looks a little more interesting. Because I think black has to go king f8 here to try to keep the semblance of the attack going, and now I'm going to take with a pawn. Admittedly, um, maybe this will still be interesting, but I feel like it's not quite enough for my opponent. Takes there. Okay, so I'm going to take, and I assume take, what then? Do I play knight takes e7? Yeah, might as well. Check. I mean, could Alex actually play king f6 here? That would be kind of wild looking, but maybe it's playable. Because you hate to have to go back to e8 if you're playing black in this position. So you might as well. Yeah, you might as well try it. All right, let's go check. I mean, the king's actually, like, fairly snug where it's currently at. It, it's a bit precarious, though. Like, if the queen is not here, this might collapse for black. Which way should I take now? Which direction? I mean, this makes by far the most sense, just visually. But there might be something to be said for taking with the bishop. Nah, I'm going to take with the pawn. And again, like, if I could give a check somewhere, maybe pick up this pawn, this would be great. But the queen is sitting here. The queen is annoying. I don't know. I don't know, folks. I'm probably not, not much better here. I'm going to take once. And now maybe bishop c5. It's 
It's nothing special, though. What A4? A4 of the check, though, is not anything special either. Let's go F4. Now I'm down on the clock. Now I need to just play fast. All right, going to take. Oh, give me that. Let's start trying to advance the pawns now. Check. It's going to be a scramble, folks. I don't want to trade. He's panicking. Oh, I won. <laughs> Alex, I think we were both panicking there, actually. You went for the rook takes b3, I think, a little too early. If you hadn't done that so early, you might have flagged me. I know it's tempting to give checks, but I think I had a little too much time for that. <laughs> Granted, uh, there were mutual blunders here, though. <laughs> Good game. GG. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was annoying because i didn't really want to trade rooks because if i trade rooks this g pawn becomes pretty dangerous my bishop's kind of out of the game i have a majority but um yeah that pawn's gonna run pretty quickly i don't know i, I don't actually don't think the way that i ha handled the middle game was that good like in hindsight i probably should just take this pawn or take it with the knight that's probably the cleanest thing to do I got a little fancy with bishop b5. Yeah, I could also take with a pawn, evidently. There is always this move I was mildly worried about. So in hindsight, I can just take with the knight. Ooh, it really hates bishop b5. I mean, it, it looks pretty natural, but I could see how that's a mistake. Because the bishop's a liability on b5. Take. It's one of these lines, like... For white, this can be kind of frustrating because it feels like you should be just winning here or close to it, but in fact, there's nothing. <laughs> I think you played quite well, Alex. Yeah, good job. Almost got me in the time scramble. Almost. <laughs>